Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Well, this winter we have had so many customers talking about, oh, I've got bluebirds at my bird bath this winter. I've got bluebirds at my bird feeder this winter. Is this normal? Are they going to stay a nest in my yard? And, and why are there so many of them? And I, Well, I thought, you know, we better address this. This is a great time to talk about uh, the bluebirds that we're seeing and kind of what we can expect out of them in the coming weeks ahead. So first off, the first question is, is kind of, is this normal? That we don't normally see this many bluebirds at our feeders and bird baths during the winter? This is actually an exceptional year. So the answer to that question is really no, we don't see that many. Now we always have bluebirds in our area in winter, but this year, with especially with this exceptional freeze that we, and cold temperatures we had over the last month, has really dropped driven them into the heated bird baths and to the, the food stations and the feeding stations where what you know a lot of times uh, bluebirds in winter that we have here follow uh, interspecific flocks feeding around. Uh, they follow chickadees and titmice and uh, downy woodpeckers and nuthatches. Those are little flocks that form up in winter and a lot of times bluebirds will associate with them because if one bird finds food the others have find food and they have a chance to find food. So Getting them to feed at your bird feeders has a lot to do with them seeing other birds feeding at your feeders or coming to your bird bath and they realize, wow, this is beneficial for me and the stress was really high. So we had a lot of birds at our feeders and bird baths. Now, I, are these birds that we're seeing the ones that necessarily will nest in your yard? It's a really good question because we get a lot more bluebirds in winter here that come down from our northern tier states where the conditions are far worse in Minnesota and the Nebraska and the Dakotas and places like that. And so a lot of those birds move south and what they tend to settle into in the winter are areas that have lots of berries, lots of soft mass. This year we had a, a, a pretty wet summer, it was decent, so a lot of bushes and shrubs and trees produced quite a bit of fruit. So a lot of robins and bluebirds settled into our area for the winter, only to be caught by this horrendously bad weather that we had for the last month. But they were already kind of committed to stay here and, and, and they had to survive these, through this harsh stretch. So that means a lot of the birds that you're seeing, especially these small flocks of 8, 10, even 12, 14 bluebirds at your bird bath and, and maybe feeding, a lot of those birds are probably going to go back north to nest. And a lot of our birds typically tend to migrate or just shift to the south a bit, maybe to the, the southern part of the state or into Arkansas and Texas and, and some of the southern states. And they tend to return in late February. So I guess the point is the birds that you're seeing at your feeders may not be the same birds that may nest in your birdhouses that you put up for them. But you're already you know, halfway there. If you do have bluebirds in your yard, you have the chance to get them into a bluebird box and you know, an improved chance to get into a bluebird box. So should I go out and buy a bluebird box to get up for them? Well, if you've watched any of my other programs on bluebirds, especially in winter, you know that I talk about having your bluebird boxes up in, in late February. The reason for this is this is the time when bluebirds start pair bonding. Now, they're not going to lay eggs until April. They, they won't lay eggs until there are enough insects to feed those babies. And there's not going to be insects into that supply anytime soon but the male and the female start strengthening their pair bonds. And so that includes a bit courtship and they'll actually see them passing sprigs of grass back and forth to each other. And I will invariably get some phone calls the end of February, early March. People get all excited because they find some sprigs of grass in their bluebird boxes. And that's part of that pair bonding, that courtship that's going on right now. That doesn't mean 100% that they're gonna nest in that box that they're taking sprigs of grass into now. Now, hopefully they will, and they certainly may. But a lot of things determine whether a, a bluebird will choose a nesting site. I we have this beautiful carving by Mr. Pettijohn of uh, a, a bluebird at a natural cavity. And remember, that's where bluebirds typically nest. They nest in old knot holes in trees. They nest in old downy woodpecker holes or hairy woodpecker holes. But a, a nesting bird that cavity nest wants that nest box to be hold just to be big enough for them to squeeze down into, to feel safe in there. So when you're selecting bluebird boxes, 
some of the criteria I want you to use whenever you're doing that is to make sure that Bluebird boxes, the dimensions are correct for them to nest in. They don't want to fill up a very huge container uh, uh, with nesting material. It'll be too far down in there because the babies have to be able to get up and out of the hole whenever it's time for them to leave. Um, but also you want, but most importantly, you want to make sure that hole is one and a half inches in diameter. That's just big enough for a bluebird to squeeze into, but it's uh, too small for nest competitors like starlings to get into, which is a really terrible bird to have harassing your bluebirds. Now, house sparrows will still be able to get in there, and you're going to have to battle that battle, but I've got whole videos on nothing but that. But things like Carolina wrens will nest in these, chickadees will nest in these, tit mice will nest in these. So there are several species of birds that will nest in a bluebird box. So part of the way you can help them is site selection. I, if you put a bluebird box on a tree, especially in a wooded area, your chances of getting bluebirds in that are not very good. If you put that same box out on a pole out in an open area with scattered trees around there, your chances greatly increase to get bluebirds into that box. Now, once you put the, the, the box up, you're committing to be a landlord, a committed landlord. That means you're going to help that bluebird uh, every chance you get. You need to check that box on a regular basis and tear out uh, any sparrows nests that go in there. And that's another criteria. We talked about a one and a half inch hole. We talked about uh, the, the right down dimensions, ventilation holes at, at, for the box. It, it, this one has perch sites on it. But probably the most important feature of a bluebird house is one that's easy to clean because you're going to have to rip the, oh, the competitor's nest out of there. The house sparrows are being the ones that we're talking about. Now, if a chickadee nests in the box, you have to let them put the nest in there. If a Carolina wren nests in it, you gotta let, so you have to watch what's going in your box. But if it is a house sparrow, an English sparrow, they are the enemy. They're an introduced species. They're negatively impacting bluebird populations. So we want to keep bluebird, uh, bluebirds safe, and we want to keep those house sparrows from nesting inside of there. A lot of things you can do to battle those. You might want to watch one of my other videos on that as a whole. But a good bluebird box also has what's called a nest lift. This keeps the birds from nest, uh, nest off the bottom of the box. It raises up and allows air underneath there. That keeps the nest drier, and it keeps from insects from being able to to utilize the bottom of it because moisture is their friend, not the bluebird's friend. So a nest lift is a, you can buy separate nest lifts or some boxes come with nest lifts in them. So that's a great idea. Now we always talk about monitoring your box. A good, one of the reasons why we like birds to have easy access is because you really should keep an eye on your box and monitor them. The, the bluebirds have for generations now come out of bluebird boxes in which people check the nest boxes. So when you walk up to this box, I usually tell mom I'm nearby, I say, Mama Bluebird, I'm coming to check the nest, and she comes flying out, and she lands on the pole, and I lo lower down that side, and I count the number of eggs, and I write the date down, or I count the number of babies that have hatched, and I write that date down because it's, it's 12 to 14 days for them to hatch and it's 12 to 14 days for them to fledge. And so if you keep good records, you, can, you know when to expect them to leave that box because once they leave the box, they're not coming back. So the day those babies leave that nest box, you can go in and take out that old nesting material and dump it, clean it out, brush it out put that nest lift back in there because when she comes back to build a second nest, they'll nest three times per season, when she comes back to bring that and to start nesting again, she won't use that old nest down in the bottom. She'll build another nest on top of the old nest and another one on top of that. And she'll it gets dangerous for her because she gets too close to the top where raccoons can reach in there and grab her at night. So you need to make good wise selections whenever you're selecting a box. Remember, they like open country. If you think of a golf course or a city park where you've got open grass underneath scattered trees, that is perfect for a bluebird. So if your yard looks like that, or if you're in you know, your neighboring yard, when I say your yard, I mean I mean your surroundings. So your yard might not be really open, but you might have a lot of open country around you. So a bluebird box placed in your front where that near that open country might get you bluebirds. Whereas if it's all woods, your chances of getting bluebirds aren't very good. So 
Um, yes, they may stay in nest, and hopefully they will because they are absolutely beautiful. I had a male singing in my yard just two days ago. I heard him out there advertising and Ruth shaking her heads. I think she's heard him singing so far. So um, they're getting in the mood to start flirting and start pair bonding. So now's the time to take advantage of. Hopefully the ground's soft enough now that you can get your post in the ground uh, to, to get your bluebird boxes up. No two bluebird boxes any closer than 100 yards apart. This rule, now that's the rule for wide open country, but if you have a nice tree line, you can break that a little bit by having on one side in the open area one bluebird box, and then if that tree line's there on the other side, you can have another box. But for the rule, as a rule of thumb, 100 yards apart, because the males, if they can see each other, they're not going to like it, and they're going to spend more time uh, fighting with each other rather than taking care of the, the, the female and, and raising the baby. So remember that. The one three. And another rule of thumb, do not place your bluebird boxes near any wren houses. Uh, house wrens or jenny wrens, the, you know, the little houses that have the one inch diameter hole, got them back here, the little tiny holes in it, those jenny wrens, the little house wrens, will go in and break those bluebird eggs if they're too close. So make sure that your bluebird boxes and your house wren boxes are a good, good distance apart. Now that, that's pretty easy because house wrens tend to want to be in the trees and the bluebirds need to be out in that open country. So if you place them properly, you've probably got them a good distance apart and that's going to be enough to keep the bluebirds safe. So I hope that covers the basics of what the, most of the questions that have been coming in here. I know I've done other articles and other videos on bluebirds. Um, if you would, if you like the videos, please give them a like, give them a share. Check us out on YouTube and you can subscribe to my channel there. Uh, it's got a lot of videos on there as well. So send in ideas for future programs. And until then, come by and let's talk birds.